So this is problem number nine for my web assign, which is problem number 29.mi.fb and chapter 24 are Surway and Jewett's uh, edition nine, um, Physics for Scientists and Engineers textbook. So we're looking at a um, thin cylindrical shell, uh, sorry, thin spherical shell of a certain radius, mine happens to be 13 centimeters, with a total charge distribution on its surface. So this is probably a conductor is my guess, right? Because conductors always have their, their charges distributed on the surface. So we have some radius. This is a solid conductor, let's say. And so we have a positive charge everywhere around. So the electric field is going to be pointing outwards like so, uniformly all the way around. Well, it's equally spaced all the way around, I should say. So we want to find the electric field 10 centimeters from the center okay so we know that r for my problem is 13 centimeters so what we're last asked for is we're looking for the electric field inside this guy so there's my gaussian surface and so i draw my little r i'm going to call it r n r i n you can't read that i apologize but that the, the radius inside um r sphere and so what we're looking for there is what is the electric field in there and so when r so the first case is when little r the radius of our gaussian is less than big r the radius of our solid conductor our solid sphere um, we're looking to see what the electric field looks like there and so through gauss's law we've been doing it and doing it and doing it we've seen it before the integral uh, e dot da becomes simply e a um, and that's going to equal the charge enclosed. And hopefully you can jump straight to the conclusion now. There is no charge enclosed here. All of the charge the problem states is on the surface. And so when the charge enclosed is zero, the area for sure is not zero. So that must mean that the electric field inside, E inside, must be zero because there is no charge enclosed. All right. And so we type that in. Let's see what we get. And the direction, the electric field is zero. Let's see if we're right. Yay. Okay. So the next part is what happens if you're outside the circle? What happens if the radius of your Gaussian circle is bigger than the radius of the, uh, of the conductor itself? So now our Gaussian surface is here. Okay. And we are going to look then at the radius of the Gaussian surface is going to be bigger than that r, big r. All right, so let's look for what the electric field is on the outside of that. And just like before, the electric field times the area of our Gaussian surface is going to equal the charge enclosed divided by epsilon naught. Okay, and so we're looking for E out. The area, again, this is the area. This is the flux through our Gaussian. So this is the area of our Gaussian. And the area of the sphere is pi uh, r uh, squared. Oh, what am I talking about? 4 pi r squared. Sorry, lost my train of thought there. I got. I was actually thinking about, is this big r, little r? And um, it's late here, and my brain's not working. But it's little r. It's the radius of the Gaussian. So 4 pi little r squared is the area of a of a of a sphere the, the charge enclosed by that gaussian is simply the charge that is on the sphere itself and my problem says that that charge is 33.2 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs 33.2 microcoulombs And I should just write Q there because we're keeping our variables at the start, divided by epsilon naught. So to solve this guy for E, we pull all of this over. And so we have Q over 4 pi epsilon naught, and then a 1 over R squared term. And if you recall, that 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught is simply K. It's the Coulomb constant. So this is K, Q over R squared which, if you think about it, looks an awful lot like the electric field away from a point charge. 
So if you have a evenly distributed mass that's spherical in nature, then when you get away from it, then the uh, electric field is, is resembles that of a point charge. Of course, this only works again for r, little r, outside the big R. If you go inside, it's zero. So this outside is kind of like gravity. You know, if you are if you have two masses, a huge mass like the Earth and a little mass like an apple, it's as if all the gravity of the Earth is acting on the center, and we look at the distance between the center of those two objects. Okay, the same is true here for the for the electric field outside of a charge distribution that's shaped like a, uh, a sphere. All right, so now all that's left to do is to plug numbers in. Now we can take our uh, 33.2 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. And for my problem, it's asking for what is the electric field when it's 23 centimeters from the center. And so the radius of my Gaussian is 23 centimeters, or 0 0.23 meters. And don't forget, we have to square that. When you, when you do that out, it becomes 5.65 times 10 to the 6 newtons per coulomb. And I've got that here in the calculator just so you can see it. So k times 33.2 e minus 6 divided by 0.23 squared. But again, the units is looking for mega newtons per coulomb. And so mega is 10 to the 6. So that's just simply, oh, I don't know if you can see that, 5.65 mega newtons per coulomb. So let's type that in. 5.65 and then the direction of this is radially outward because our charge distribution is positive. Yay! One more down.